Uh, because uh, we have a, a very cool topic to talk about. A lot of people want to make sure everything looks nice uh, around their business or their residence, Michelle. Mm -hmm. And, that's and this the time of year, it's kind of tricky. Oh, <laughs> yes, it is. Especially we haven't had any rain for a oh, while. Tell and me about it. That's why Kate Jones is joining us Good in morning. studio. Good to yes, see you. And this is your you. wheelhouse, isn't it? Sometimes, yes. Yeah. I like to think that. <laughs> yes, yes. I love plants and I love everything that has to do with them. And you're right, Michelle, this lack of rain recently has been really tough and grass is struggling, the trees are struggling. You almost see them turning colors already because it's been so hot and miserable. Yeah. Yeah, especially yes. when we were talking about the crunchy grass that oh, was yeah. in some areas. Yeah, and, definitely. No, and that's something that you guys have to pay attention to, mm -hmm, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so we have a mow crew and they have been selectively just not mowing about half of our clients right now just because it's better for the grass you know like it might be growing a little bit but the majority of it is in dormant right now and it would just hurt it and burn so they it. have so moved into that dormant stage yep. in some yep. cases i didn't yeah. realize that. oh okay. yeah even yeah. the grass mm -hmm. wow mm -hmm. so if we get down. some an influx of rains and so forth then it'll, bounce, that, back. it'll bounce oh definitely yeah then. grass is really resilient mm -hmm. that way it just shuts down and conserves all of its energy and then as soon as it gets a little bit of rain it just pops back up and you're good to go mm -hmm. and, yeah. then, and then people will be cursing the day it rains exactly because exactly because then again. you have your mow and you have your weeds back as soon as that <laughs> rain comes. I know. Yes. Uh, but we're here talking yeah. today about flowers and flower beds right? yes yes so we also have a crew that goes around and does maintenance on um, yards and I just thought that it'd be cool to talk about kind of the steps behind that and kind of give pointers for transitioning into fall and winter. I know we don't want to think about snow yet, but it's coming. You have to realize it is coming, right? Yes, yeah. And um, kind of just touch on subjects with that. All right. What's, yeah. what, so people that um, you go and help them set up flower beds mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. forth, what's kind of the most requested type of flower Weeding. beds? De oh, okay. Yep. yep. Taking so care people of the weeds. have people uh, have our crews go and uh, just take care of the weeds. They're like new installs at our new projects. I didn't know I could do that. Have somebody I come out and do well, all my weeds. When did you start offering this weeds. service? Ooh, a while ago. A while <laughs> really? ago. Yeah. Yep. You better leave me a business card I can because do that. that's the biggest pain of all. Not only in yeah. your flower beds, but your your vegetable gardens mm -hmm, too. Is mm -hmm. that at the same time? Exactly. Yeah. So we have a crew of about two people who go around. Uh, one week is commercial, so they go and hit some of our commercial clients and then the other week is residentials and they just drive that. around to houses and they'll go weed for you. That is or awesome. Trim wow. your shrubs or Why is it important to weed uh, your flower bed? Keeping the weeds out of your flower bed helps your plants survive, helps them just get all of the nutrients that they need because those weeds will steal all that from the plants. It also cuts down on um, diseases and like bugs and pests in your garden. If you keep your beds nice and clean, you keep all that extra stuff out and it's just easier on your plants that way, you know? And then I think it just looks 100% better if you just every week go out. I mean, even if you do it yourself, you know, just go out and pick like five weeds a day it'll really cut down on the dandelions or the thistles or mm -hmm. What if somebody wants to have a flower bed in the spring mm -hmm. and thinking about, so they kind of want to maybe start and get things established now so that yeah. in the spring, yeah. do you guys kind of help we with do. design? Yep. And yep, so I would come out and talk with you and I would come up with a design that kind of matches um, what sunlight, what water your area has, and then kind of what you're wanting planted too. So a lot of people right now, I've been talking to people about uh, grasses because grasses are really, four season interest plant. And they're also, a lot of them are native to Iowa, so they do really well in our climate and our heat and our extremes. So from the cold to the hot. Um, and you can leave your grasses up year round. So you so, don't have to worry about messing with them or, nope. or transferring them. Nope. Or, I know some bulbs. A lot you gotta, of them you have to trim back. Yep. You have to trim yep. back or the bulb, you got to actually take them out yep. of the ground, which yep. is a real pain. It is, yeah. because you got to go find them or the squirrels do. Yeah, yeah, one <laughs> or the other. Yeah. And so, get them out of the ground soon enough and don't let them sit there too long. Exactly, uh, and, exactly. So right now is a really good time to plant. It's a little hot, but you want to get them in before mid-October when the frost hits again. But you want to give them enough time to get established and get their roots started. And, and you mentioned that what people are most requesting is low, low maintenance. maintenance type yes. of thing. So you mentioned grasses. Yes. What yep. are some of the other? Um, low maintenance options? Yeah. Oh, shrubs. shrubs. Shrubs are actually really low maintenance. What kind of shrub in particular? Burning bush. Burning, yep. I, you didn't even waste any time. <laughs> no, <said> that quick. <laughs> no, because people ask for it a lot because they're really nice, just green shrubs year round. And then as soon as the fall hits, they turn bright red. 
Really? Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know if I have one of those. Yeah, you okay. might want one. They're right, kind of cool. There you They're go. Cool. You know somebody that can get, hook me up with one? Yes, I do. Okay. I, I might know a person. All right. Um, no, but hey, how big do they get? How big it just depends on the one you want. They can get anywhere to 15 feet tall to 3 feet tall. Seriously? Yep, they have different varieties. All right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about flowers? Flowers. I love cone flowers. I love anything native just because it does really well here in Iowa. So you've got cone flowers. You've got uh, false indigo. You've got... Oh, you guys are. Um. <laughs> okay, the cone flower. How big yep. is the, how big is the cone flower? They only get about two and a half, three feet wide, two and a half, three feet tall. Okay. And that's about three years down the road because natives take a good two seasons to get their get established. whole thing established. Yep, because they work on their roots first, and then that's how they get so um, drought tolerant. What right. about flower beds that are also like a good cutting? Garden, yeah. So that because yeah. you know I like to. It's yep. nice to have them outside, yep. so but it's also Asiatic nice to have lilies, ones to cut peonies, and bring inside. Roses. Um, anything like that. So anything that takes a little bit more maintenance or what your cut gardens are going to be, which is fine because if you know how to take care of them and you know kind of what those plants expect and what they need, they're much easier to take care of, which I also like talking to people about because I like to help um, just teach people about plants. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. now let, yep. let's talk about, uh, you know, people that might have beds there, flower beds right now. Let's talk about the watering uh, procedures mm -hmm. that you go mm -hmm. through because we had a long dry spell yeah. here. Yeah, it was almost it, five weeks. It, it wasn't yeah. that long? Yep. Okay, and what is the, the best procedure for watering flower beds like this? You do it, you, you've heard a couple of different theories. Mm -hmm. Do it first thing mm -hmm. in the morning, do it late at night? Both. Do, both? Both, I would say water twice a day. Seriously? In this heat, yeah. Yep. Okay. And the humidity, you think that it would help hold the water in with those plants? No, it just sucks it all out. So I would say you almost can't overwater when it's 100 degrees out because your plants are just dying. They're just really taking that heat really hard. Um, evergreens might not like to be watered that often, but just testing your soil right before you water, just sticking your finger in an inch down if it's dry, just soak them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. easy. And it's, yep. it's a soaking for on, on the soil on the itself soil. or yep. don't spray nope. the plant? Don't spray the plant because the leaves can't really handle that much water on them. So then they can get like a dusty miller or a mold on them. Okay. Yep. Which then leads to more diseases. There you yeah. go. Yeah. All right. So some things to keep Good in mind. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. This like, time around. Yeah. <laughs> so right. perfect. And I love the fact that you know we can hire somebody to come and do our weed. I yeah. love that. And yeah. you probably uh, have some people that can prepare their garden, their our flower beds, and their gardens for the winter yeah. too. Yeah. So guys we can do fall cleanups. So we have this big vacuum suction truck that we build for the winter. We drive around and we just suck up all the leaves in the backyard, so we blow them to a pile and suck them all up. Uh, it's kind of an interesting process to nope. watch. We have to follow you somewhere. Yeah. We, we, yeah. I'm serious. So what, what about the fun? composting aspect of that? Yeah. I know we have not much time. But I don't have a compost pile, but you definitely could do it on your own. You just have to keep that compost pile turned and get enough oxygen in it. I think that's where people struggle with compost is that they just kind of forget about it and think that it'll just decompose on its own. No, you gotta kind of tend it and just turn it. You gotta turn it, don't yep. you, yeah. You gotta get all that do oxygen. Do you have to add in. anything to it or not? You do, I know that there's a ratio of like nitrogen and phosphorus that you should have in there, but I don't remember that off the top of my head. Okay, but you do have it at the shop though. We don't have a compost pile. No, I say you, no. you do have the, the, the formula at the shop. Yeah. People can yep. call and yeah. get oh, the information definitely. from you, right? Yes. They yep. can, yeah, get a hold of you either on yeah. the phone or email you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the idea that they, if you leave that in your beds and yep. kind of start, yep. like some people think, well, I leave that because that's then going to be adding, you know, compost, but that isn't. I don't think you so. Need to do, mm -hmm. I think you, you clean it up. Get it and out clean it up. Back to the whole mm -hmm. diseases thing. If you let it sit there and rot and just, it gets really nasty Causes in the other spring. Problems. You want yeah. to do that. Yep. I like the idea that you're going to come out and you're going to clean up for us yeah. and pull the weeds yeah. and then make sure the flower beds are great <laughs> and my, my bed is good for the winter and then mm -hmm. next spring uh, when it's ready to plant, I can call you. You can, put, yeah. you can come put them in too. Yes, definitely. And the we fact that you're you like to teach I people do. so that they yes. can you know maintain and manage I like things to share my love of Get plants. excited about yes. it. <laughs> I almost push it on people sometimes. <laughs> All right, how do people get a hold of you over at Capital Landscaping? emails. It's capitallandscaping.com is our website and our Best email is just mail at capitallandscaping.com. Um, we always answer our phones too. We always have somebody in there to talk to you because we want to catch your business and have us come out and talk to you about what you want to do. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Great. And again, uh, when it gets when it's this hot outside, water when? Every day. Every Twice day. Twice a day. In the morning and at night. And at night. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Good information. Thank you. Thank All right. You. Ten minutes past eight o'clock.